All right. Another episode of Confessions of a Street Broker. Street Broker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, today we got a guy that, man, I, I kind of think you're like the puppet master of industrial around here. You're kind of seeing everything. You're kind of watching it up from this 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 perch because you got so much footage. But uh, That's good. Probably, yeah, it is. It's uh, but today we got uh, managing principal Holt for Commercial Cannon Schultz. There you go. What's thank, up, man? Thank you for having me. This is yeah. fun. Good, yeah, good setup. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's a uh, golly. We've worked so many deals together. It's, it's uh, you know, um, you know, it's always. It's just, it's just crazy to think. I, I couldn't even tell you how many deals we've done. You know, but uh, long, long time. Yeah, and um. But uh, how many, how much square footage do you cover right now? So me personally, well, let me start bigger picture. Okay. Uh, so the company as a whole, mm-hmm. we're probably just under a hundred million square feet lease and or management. Okay. Bulk of that industrial uh, Holt started the company with industrial roots. So that's mm-hmm. kind of been our, our fastball. Mm-hmm. Um, and then our team. So dig Dallas industrial group. Mm-hmm. Um, so we probably have close to 35 million square feet, um, 40 million square feet yeah. for our team. And, and um, so we're a team of 16, about to add another person on Monday, yeah. actually. Um, so, yeah, we've been fortunate for a boutique firm to yeah. have some, some kind of national type presence in square footage. Yeah, no, I would think... Anytime there's a portfolio selling or anything like that, you guys are definitely on the the list to be talked to about the leasing assignment for it. Um, so that's, you know, that just says, you know, what a, it's very, it's very unique for a boutique to be in that conversation with all the, the alphabets. So, <laughs> yeah, agreed, agreed. And it's, uh, it's a challenge. I mean, that's, that's why we've got to work hard and, yeah. and stay on top of things and, I'm glad you have an observation that we're on top of those OMs because that's our that's our growth model is mm-hmm. to be the go to team from an underwriting standpoint, uh, gut check all the MLAs, provide comps, market data. Uh, yeah, that's a huge piece of our growth. So we really focus on that and and try to train our young guys to focus on that. And um, that's kind of been some of our secret sauce to take the time to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, let's get into Cannon Schultz. All right. Start at the beginning. Where are you from? Yeah, very beginning. So I was born in Bountiful, Utah. Okay. Uh, my dad worked for J.C. Penney's. He was a store manager, so we we moved around frequently. Okay. So lived there two years. Don't really remember any of that. Moved to Colorado, just outside of Denver. Mm-hmm. Uh, lived there for four years. Albuquerque, New Mexico, for four years, and then uh, Arlington in like sixth grade. Okay. So, so you migrated from the mountains all the way to Arlington. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And looking back, God, I mean, I had no idea just the beautiful places that we lived, you know, the mountains of Utah, mm-hmm. uh, in Albuquerque, we lived right at the foot of Sandia mountains. Mm-hmm. Like I could have walked there. I mean, just unbelievable that I didn't have the appreciation for it at the time, but yeah, yeah. Now we're in the concrete jungle. You can Go eat, right? Yep. And uh and shop. And that that's about what we've got here. <laughs> there you go. So Arlington, where'd you go to high school? Uh Martin. That's right. Yeah. Because you knew Ryan Newberry. Yes. Yeah. Cause... So we were uh on the same team. I'm a year older than him. Okay. So I graduated ninety four. Okay. Which somehow I've got my uh, 30th year reunion coming up in a couple weekends, which <laughs> that's that's mind chattering. Uh, but uh yeah, Ryan and I played on the same team. Yep. We were Oh, and 10. Really? Oh, and 10. Yeah. Martin's always a, usually a pretty good program. Well, shortly thereafter, they became pretty good and yeah. they may have had a run to state and, and they did pretty well. But oh, and 10. Yeah. Painful. We had good athletes too. I mean, we yeah. had, including Ryan. I yeah. mean, he played Texas Tech with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And then we had um, several guys that went to TCU. Wasn't Kyle, didn't Kyle Shipley play at Arlington Martin? He did. Yeah. 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 So he was two years younger. He was a, uh, Sophomore when I was a, a senior. Did you? But know, he played he played linebacker, right? Yeah, he's a linebacker. Tech, so. Did you know Paul Erickson? No. Um, he was my age, Arlington Martin. He was my roommate, and he was he played attack with us and all Cut. that stuff. So, um, but yeah, no, we had a lot. We had a decent amount of Martin guys on our team. Yeah, so. best best Owen team 
10 <laughs> ever. 10 yeah, I went 0 and 10 team ever. <laughs> okay. A lot so, of hard work for nothing. Yeah. No, that's uh, – man, how do you – like about game seven, like how do you get up for that? Like, yeah, that, that's a grind. <laughs> it's a grind. Oh, man. Well, I guess you got so, a lot of Arlington schools, so you got a lot of Arlington rivalries to be like, this week it's it, right? That's right. This is it. Well, this is it. Don't feel so bad about 0 and 10. I'm going to give you a little uh, – so, you know, Jeff and I grew up in Irving. That's right. Which we played, uh, we played Nimitz and MacArthur. Yep. So, played some of those Irving schools. So, you know, Jeff's team, they, uh, they went a couple rounds deep in the playoffs. Uh, Isabella's dad kicked them out of the playoffs. Her dad played at Arlington Lamar. Okay. And, All right. And, um, All right. And then, um, I, I was pretty fortunate, you know, just from a cool factor that, um, Every year, our first round of the playoffs, we had to play Carter. Yeah. So I played Carter in the Cotton Bowl, and I played him in Texas Stadium. So okay. that was pretty cool. And Absolutely. we actually didn't get slaughtered. It was like we lost one game 28 to 14, another one 21 to 14. So I felt that was a very solid showing for a team that had 23 guys signed letters yeah. of intent. <laughs> yeah. That's the real deal. Yeah. So, but Irving has definitely faded. So this is just, I was looking at the, you know, um, the records of Irving schools last last year, Irving High, where we went. All right, zero and ten. Ooh, ooh. Irving Nimitz, one and nine. Oh, man. They beat Irving oh. High. Okay. Irving MacArthur, two and eight. Gosh. They beat Irving and Irving Nimitz. Unbelievable. S- between the three of them, they didn't beat one team outside of Irving. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? There should be good athletes. I mean, that's. You know, there was a talk at one time where they would make Irving High like a senior high so they could be competitive again yeah. and feed into it. But God, it didn't sound like that would even matter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Unbelievable. So anyways, well. All yeah. right. So so on from Martin High School yeah. to Texas A&M. Okay. Uh, I was in the Corps of Cadets for two years. Okay. And then, uh, which I would absolutely do that again. I mean, awesome experience just to be part of the school and tradition and everything. It's like but, a military fraternity, right? Yeah, yeah. Which at the uh, end of your sophomore year, you end up either committing to the military or just going, they call it DNC, drilling ceremonies. Okay. But um, but all, I just you live on campus and, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, working out every yeah. morning at 6 a.m. And uh, just not a lot of fun for a college student and to experience everything else that college has yeah. to offer. Yeah. So I did that for two years, uh, joined a fraternity, did both for a little while, but then quit after my sophomore year and, yeah. um, yeah, graduated and then got a job with Ernst and Young okay. on the consulting side, um, which was awesome. Uh, I'm not a computer guy come, <laughs> come to come to find out, but we were doing software implementations for, uh, telecom companies. But fantastic experience. I, I lived in Belgium for a year. Oh, that's cool. Anchorage, Alaska for a year. Uh, stints to New York. So just a ton of travel. Um, so were you like, were you like on site at a company y'all were consulting with like, and you were just kind of, hey, I'm going to live over here for a year and this is my assignment type deal. Is that what it was? Yeah. So if it was, if it was like New York, we'd mm-hmm. go a week, come home on the weekends. We just travel back and forth. But yeah. uh, the Belgium deal was legit living over there for a year. We go and we were implementing big software package for a telecom company. Okay. And I was kind of like the process guy in between the super technical folks mm-hmm. and uh and the business people. But um yeah, lived there and and every weekend we'd go experience something different in yeah. Europe. So <laughs> all the way from uh running of the bulls in Pamplona to skydiving out of helicopters in the Swiss Alps and man, uh, what an experience. And, That's oh, it's cool. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and just really neat group of people, just well-rounded, talented, funny, smart. Just every person that I worked with there was just legit the full full package. So yeah. great place to start my career, but um, got kind of burned out on the travel. Yeah. Wanted to be home with some friends a little more. And then, uh, as I said, I'm just, I'm not a, not a computer guy. So <laughs> needed a little more sales and, and interaction. Yeah. So kind of towards the tail end of my stint at Ernst & Young, I started flipping houses with a buddy that I worked with there and, mm-hmm. and a college friend. Um, so we did both for a little while, flipped houses and, and still worked at Ernst & Young. I'd, uh, when I was in town, I'd leave the Ernst & Young office and, and go install mini blinds or do some work. Right. Uh, so we were doing Section 8 houses 
uh, down in Oak Cliff and then Fair Park. Okay. So uh, some rougher parts of town. Yeah. But I ended up leaving Ernst & Young. We did that full time for probably a year and a half, two years. Yeah. And then uh, the wheels kind of fell off of that deal. We had a property manager named Brother Al that <laughs> started stealing the rent. All the all the tenants were paying the rent, but uh, he was reporting that that none of the rent was coming in. Oh. <laughs> so uh, so that that kind of fell apart. How did you source your deals in Oak Cliff? Cold calling? Uh, <laughs> no, there were guys that kind of specialized in 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 uh, brokering. Just those, wholesaling it and yeah, and all that stuff. those houses. I mean, there were anywhere from twenty grand to, to fifty grand. You'd fix yeah. them up, and originally, we'd fix them up and then sell them to each other. Yeah, get our money out. Yeah, and so we probably did that. I don't know four times, and then yeah. we figured out how to get some other money and equity, um, some hard money yep. loans mm-hmm. sometimes, and we built up a pretty decent portfolio. Then we started selling them off to investors, mm-hmm. and. Um, which just a tough segment. I mean, that's a tough neighborhood. Oh, yeah. They unfortunately with that area and neighborhood, lots of times they would tear it apart as quick as you could fix it. Yeah. I mean, literally break in and steal the carpet off the floor or right. take the cabinets off the wall. And um so so that didn't work. Yeah. But that that kind of spawned my interest in in real estate. Mm-hmm. And uh fraternity brother Robert Jimenez who okay. runs leasing for granted. He's mm-hmm. on the office side. Um, just started getting me introductions. And cool. originally I had an interest in development. Yeah. Although I'd never done anything in development and I didn't have a, a, a finance background. So mm-hmm. I was industrial distribution in college. Okay. Which is kind of a mix of engineering and business. Um, so I had a hard time getting my foot in the door for any kind of junior development position. But mm-hmm. what kept coming up was leasing. Um, and then I found my way to industrial and, and meeting with Holt guys and Jim Bryce, yep. um, which shout out to Jim Bryce. He just celebrated 30 years with the company. Oh, so that's awesome. yeah, great, great mentor and great guy. Blessed to have him on, on our team and, and, um, uh, in my life. So anyway, things progressed with them. There was a guy leaving, um, from Holt and I was able to get a position and, assume some responsibilities relatively quickly in terms of getting portfolio to start leasing and, and cutting my teeth on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was 28 at the time. I had some good work experience. So it was easy for me to get in the mix and pick things up yeah. relatively quickly, yeah. but uh, fortunate to step into a spot that I had a portfolio kind of from day one um, and a little bit spread out from day one, to be honest. So I was GSW Brook Hollow and then still, as I do today, share some responsibilities with John Gorman down in South Dallas. Yep. Um, and, and some of that original portfolio we still have. So the stuff down in Stone Ridge, we've mm-hmm. worked on for 18 to 20 years. So that's some of the stuff that I originally started on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that got me into industrial so, real so estate I got you to- in, two, in 2005, October 2005. 2005. Well, so you got in when it was pretty decent at the time. So, yeah. um, yeah. So, I, I guess when you started, how much footage were you, was Holt at at that as a company working oh, on? Gosh, you know, honestly, we've probably at least doubled since then, if not tripled. Um, so we've had some significant growth, which is awesome because Holt's story left Trammell Crow and mm-hmm. literally had one client, and uh, Jim Bryce was his first employee, and has since built it. I think we've got. Uh, over 40 clients, most of which institutional focused, some family office, Mm -hmm. um, maybe just under 200 employees. And and like I was saying at the beginning, a hundred million square feet ish under lease and or management. So, I mean, it's been, it's been on fire that for a boutique firm, they've really grown it. Oh yeah. It's a machine now for sure. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. There's, there's, you're kind of in that, I call it like just in between. You're kind of like in between like a, a, a large shot, but not, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's been interesting, like, you know, having Will work with me, you know, I didn't ever get to work anywhere like that. I kind of just mm-hmm. went straight out and started doing my thing or whatever. And then, you know, working with Jeff. And so we're just kind of always in this, you know, but like, I think it's cool, like, you know, having Will over here, you know, he's brought a lot of stuff that, you know, he learned there that, yep. you know, that 
I would have never known to use. And, you know, so, you know, I've indirectly got to benefit from, yeah. <laughs> from, uh, all that, but, uh, you know, it, it seems like it's a, you know, a great, you know, a great place for everybody to, to, you know, if you're going to get into commercial real estate, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to learn there to soak up. So agree. And um, we, we operate in a pretty unique way. So, so our team, um, as much as you can, I mean, this, business in general is very much an individual yeah. player business, mm-hmm. but our team operates together, shares information. We meet every Monday morning, yeah. swap deals, talk about rates, service clients together. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned doing the portfolios and the MLAs. So, um, and that's why we've got pretty good longevity for most of our guys. I mean, yeah. uh, as I was saying, Jim Bryce, 30 years, Gorman's been there forever. I'm approaching 18. Josh Barnes is 15 andrews 12 yeah so we've got a good core group of guys yeah. that um that stay for a reason because of the the people there on the team yeah um so i i guess when were y'all when you started were you were you were you getting into those pitches on the uh, on the capital market side when they were deals were trading were y'all getting tapped at that time or was it um didn't, and was i mean i wasn't around in 2005 were deals trading kind of like they were in the past couple of years where all that was happening or was it just you just kind of organically grabbing a listing here and grabbing a listing here uh, yeah. So we always had core clients that we were helping underwrite stuff. So principal has been a long-term client. TA has been a long-term client. So, um, and Fraker was in the business kind of doing his mm-hmm. thing at, uh, about, I mean, when I was starting, so yeah. similar process, it's, it's, um, way more sophisticated now. Yeah. And, uh, a lot more groups active, obviously. Um, but it, it happened the same way. Our core group of clients, we were still helping underwrite. They'd come in town, you'd tour the real estate, look at it, give them your boots on the ground opinion, support it with comps and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, kind of the same process. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I look at like, you know, we're working on a deal right now. I think that landlord is, that's probably their first deal in this market. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, you weren't the listing broker on it when it sold, um, but now you are. Right. How, how did right. how did you like work your way into know that was happening, or you know, or you know, I don't want to give away your secret sauce or anything. Yeah, but, no, I but mean, like, I think, you know, but I mean, like, you weren't on that sign or anything. So right. Yeah. Uh. Well, so we'll track the packages as okay. they're as they're launched. We've got a good system in that regard with analysts. That if that OM comes out, we add it to our list. Mm-hmm. We track it. Um. And then we maintain a pretty good relationship with all the investment sales guys. Yep. Um, and so we're helping the investment sales guys do their job. So they like to send them our way because we'll spend time talking to people in the market. And um, I mean, so that's how that progressed. They were looking for deals, investment sales guys. They got our name or they'll see we're active in the market and mm-hmm. you'll have some phone calls with them and tell them what you think about the market. They'll come in town, tour it. And, um, that's very much of our business development process to, to gain business and new clients is to pay attention to that and, and push for, uh, to be involved in that process. So do you get, um, you know, some of the, some of the capital markets groups, they, they kind of have their own in-house leasing. Do you, do you still, do you still kind of stay in communication with them anyways? Because at the end of the day, the client's going to pick, uh, the listing broker, do you still talk to those teams a lot? Or, you know, there's some capital markets guys, they don't do leasing at all. So it's like, they don't really care who right. gets it. So. Oh, I, a lot of the capital market guys, they 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 just want the, the input or, or the owners are going to talk to several groups yeah. anyway and gut check the deal. So if we're another source for them to reference and talk to, yeah, then, then I don't think they're, I don't think they mind. Now, as time has gone on, some of those groups, some of the investment sales groups have gotten a little, um, tighter or they're, they're trying to rely on their own platform more than they, mm-hmm. than they used to. Um, but that's not, that's not the case all the way across the board. A lot of them are happy to have the help, happy to have the second opinion. Yeah. And then at this point, a lot of the folks, we're going to get the call anyway, cause there are existing clients and yeah. relationships that, um, were the ones they trust and want to talk to. So, uh, this landlord you're talking about was new to the group. Mm-hmm. So we just, 
kind of spent time with them in, in business development. But if it's somebody that we've got an existing relationship, regardless of the shop that's calling, we're going to get the phone call and talk to them yeah. about it. Well, I guess, you know, now thinking about it, like, you know, if some big landlord goes to take thing out to capital markets, they're, y'all might already be, be on the listing anyways. Yeah. At that point, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? So the new buyer, so, so you could have a deal where, you know, some landlords taking out a million feet. Well, that million feet could have four or five listing brokers within yep. it on the leasing side. Yep. So, um, which to that point that's happening with link right now. So yeah, Link's exactly that's, got a huge portfolio that might be 1.4 million square feet. Yeah. And we've got a handful of the listings. Okay. Um, so we want to make sure we're taking those phone calls certainly to defend our listings. Yeah. And then it becomes an opportunity to pick up some other listings, if we can provide value or yeah. it ends up being one of our core clients that buys it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, very key to the landlord business is to track that. We track all the comps mm -hmm. uh, from a sales perspective and, and, you know, we produce some quarterly information that that's a big piece of yeah. our marketing effort is to send out that investment sales and not only track what's on the market, but keep track of those comps as well. Yeah. No, I mean, some of your junior guys, when we, you know, when we're looking at a deal, they're more than happy to provide us MLAs yeah. on it. And the information is tight, you know, Good. it's great. So good. It's, uh, well, I'm happy to hear that because that means it's working and yeah. um, we're raising them right. And, and yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the value that we want to add. <laughs> right. Um, what, um, um, well, let's see. Do it, now y'all have also you've got old AC Adam Curran. Yes, exactly. He's right. kind of kind of really you know. I felt like y'all have always kind of dabbled around the tenant rep side, but right. like haven't. I feel like you haven't really completely stepped your foot in the pool. But I think with AC, that's the that's the plan. Exactly. Right. You know, he's that's where where he was raised, and yep. um, yep. And so I actually got him coming on here in a couple of weeks. Oh, good. So, yeah. Awesome guy. Yeah. Awesome guy. And we're, we're blessed to have him. Excited to have him. Yeah. So that, that'll be interesting to see, you know, y'all really take that leap and grow that side too, because I, yeah. I mean, I think y'all could be lethal on that side. Yeah, so. I hope so. That's the intent because you're yeah. exactly right. So our core team, um, landlord focused and to quantify, you know, we're doing 85% landlord business. Yeah. And not heavily pursuing the tenant rep, which is a miss because mm -hmm. it's such a good pay window. Oh, yeah. And me personally, anytime I've had a, a better year than average, I've either sold a building, done a couple of tenant rep deals. So yeah. um, I'm blessed to have a core book of business that is um, fantastic. But if you want to have a good year, you got to hit some of those other pay windows as well. Right. So as a team, we dabbled focusing on it. Um Josh Barnes and I kind of had an experiment. We hired some younger guys with the mm -hmm. sole intent to be tenant reps, but just the time to, it's just different. The time to manage that process and to do it right. Yeah. Uh, as you know, mm -hmm. which just admiring y'all's machine, yeah. Jeff's machine and, yeah. and uh, Robert Lynn's machine. Um, it just needs focus. It's a, just a different, different aspect of the business, which was the intent of hiring Adam because well, we had a tenant rep team, mm -hmm. but they need. They were under me and just needed some individual guidance and process related to that. Well, I think Adam also. I think he really loves the role of coach. I think he yep. really likes pouring into young guys. I think that's yep. something that he's very passionate about. And um, so you'll have a guy that'll give everybody all of his time to help him make a deal. So, which um, you have to have it because you, it takes a lot of time. And you do uh, in a business where time is money and. If you not only have to manage your own deals and produce, then and pour into some young guys, it, it, it takes a special person. That's why, you know, I always I've always said this, like I was a terrible brokerage partner because I didn't I didn't want to spend the time. Like I'd be like, you don't get this. Let's go. Like I, yeah. I, I got time for this. And then if I saw like any hesitation, I just grabbed the deal from that junior broker and be like, hey, I got yeah. it. like just I got to go wrangle this up and put it up and go get exactly the next one. Exactly right. So, you know, I, I was like, I, I was never a. You know, and the difference over here, like we got to have a team right. to like buy these assets and and right. get through all, get through closing and all that stuff, and then get through construction and yeah. get through all that. It takes a team, so it's yeah. um, it's definitely been a, a a a a totally different thing to work on for me, which has been cool. And um, you know, versus I was always just a better lone wolf broker, you yeah. know. So, um, well, uh. 
I, this is something I always like to kind of ask on here. What, uh, you know, you've made a lot of cold calls in your day yeah. developing business. Yeah. Give me some awkward, crazy stories. I know you got a bunch of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I thought about, I listened to a couple of other podcasts and yeah. I, I thought about that a little bit. And uh, I'm going to tell you a couple of different things. So first off, starting in this funny business, mm-hmm. right about the first or second month I started, we went to the GSW bus tour, the Nat Car bus oh, okay. tour. Yeah. And uh, I was just shocked that this group of guys, you drive around in a bus, drink beer, and look at buildings. Like, yeah. uh, how cool is that? <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And uh, about halfway through the bus tour, our uh, our bus gets T-boned by a truck, <laughs> by like a pickup truck that yeah. slides underneath the, uh, the middle of the bus. And yeah. I, I was just, man, what have I gotten myself into here? Yeah. Um, so pretty wild. But uh, Do they have to get a new bus? Oh, yeah. Get y'all? yeah, 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 yeah. We just stood out there, continued just to drink drinking. beer and, and, and waited for, for another bus to come. Yeah. Um, but in terms of uh, most of mine is on just funny showings, not so much cold yeah. calls, but just but crazy showings. Yeah. Uh, and also kind of going way back in old deals. So there used to be a project off of Bickham, which okay. is off Northwest Highway and uh, behind LaBear oh, over there. Yeah, there and you go. At, at dead end of the street, <laughs> just a bunch of metal buildings. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Holt owned these buildings personally or with some other partners. So this was always pri- top priority. Yeah. And, and I was the new guy tasked with leasing it. So, which subsequently that that project, you know, then got handed off to Josh and then the, yeah. the next man up. But um, just a bunch of metal buildings with ragtag tenants. I think there was a guy kind of illegally working on cars there, a bunch of sure. granite guys. Yeah. And so, uh, two funny things. So I, the only time I ever leased a space without a bathroom. Yeah. So that's, that's some good brokerage there. <laughs> yeah. Good landlord brokerage. That's right. And then, uh, some of the tenants got in an argument down there and, and one of the guys stabbed the other guy. <laughs> so didn't kill him, but, but stabbed him. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that, that was an interesting one. Yeah. That's, that's Heinz, right? So yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, that's, that's Heinz for you. Yeah. So. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it in years, but, uh, God bless Bickham, man. That place it's, is rough. It's funny. Um, uh, Jeff's son just started in the business okay. and he's working Heinz. Oh yeah. <laughs> with Keenan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you'll man, get an education you, there. Yeah. You're going to get your street smart smarts yeah, in there real exactly quick down right. there. So. Yeah. You better. It's so funny. Heinz is like the most infill neighborhood. I know. And it is just so patchy. I like, know. You go around one corner, it's like, oh, that's a great building. You go around the next corner, you're like, there's a lot of meth around. Right? Yeah. Yeah, among other things. <laughs> but that's coming. At some point, that's going to turn over. Like, there's no way just that yeah. main and main location, 35, 635, there's, there's bigger and better things coming for that area sure. for sure. I always thought it was funny because you have um, all that stuff on Good Night, and then you have Prologis' corporate, beautiful yeah. corporate center right yeah. next to it. It's just, like, yeah. it's just like these neighbors don't seem to go together. But, you know, right. it's um, – uh, are they still – they're doing the bus tours again, aren't they? Yeah. I, I feel like, yeah. You Which know. I've been fortunate to be part of that car here the last several years. Yeah. And uh, the bus tour has been my, my thing. So we brought that back after COVID. Yeah. Um, so South Dallas, big success airport was the most recent one. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, we had good attendance. I mean, yeah. almost last one might've been like 150 people. So oh, wow. it's, uh, that's cool. It's back. It's back. I did a bus tour once. I did the Brook Hollow bus tour. I was okay. like, I'm going to do it. That, yeah. No one gives any. I think I remember do that. You remember that? Yes, I, got, I do. I got yeah. Prologis to sponsor. Yeah. I got ML to sponsor. Yeah. I got um, uh, Stone Lake to sponsor <laughs> yeah. it. So. Some Brook Hollow love. Yeah. yeah we gave, then we went to Dirty Irving and looked at yeah, some it's good. <laughs> but legit, I think that's time well spent. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to dedicate that time. It's just uh, cliff notes of education for a market because you yeah. can walk away with the book. Everybody's talking about their quoted rental rates. Yeah. So it's it's a commitment with some time, but it, it's well worth the education yeah. from a market perspective. I can totally see it. it uh, I went on, I think I went on a GSW one before, um, maybe it was South Dallas a couple years ago. Yep. Um, I think I, I think me and all the Lee guys got stranded somewhere. All right. <laughs> I was like, they're in a back. I was like, I just remember being in the back of a truck with Adam Graham riding somewhere. Yep. Yeah. Deals. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, but you're right. Like when we're on those things, like I just remember doing that. It was just like, 
I feel like we kind of put some deals together out of Absolutely. that. Being like, hey, this is what's coming available here. This is this. And so it's uh, – it, it, I've always said this just even at like Mercer Company. I told Jeff, I was like, you should have like one person, their whole job is to walk around and like pair everybody's deals up. Like yeah. no – everybody's in like I feel like sometimes there's listings within our company that we should have just sold each other right and didn't even know the other guy had and right so um now I will say that's the fortunate thing with our group that we're meeting every Monday morning and yeah. part of that's rolling through those deal sheets to see if you can kind of cross pollinate and we pitch that to our clients as well yeah I may be your guy for this particular listing but you're getting this whole group of of guys eyes on it for different requirements and different parts of the market yeah um, so agree. And the last thing to that is, especially where the markets or the rates have been all over the place. Yeah. We're trying to talk about rates and correlations in different parts of the market and TI and, and just trying to get smart with the change in environment. Yeah. No, it, uh, that's what, you know, Jeff and them have a Monday morning meeting, but like at some point you get to graduate from it where you don't have to go. Oh, okay. So, Good. um, you know, so, but they're all going over a lot of tenant rep deals, but it's like, I feel like, like, I was like, you got to have like a listing Sherpa in there that's yeah. just like sitting there being like, that fits this building we have here, exactly. you know, here, you know, someone yeah. that's going around just like pairing all the deals. I think that could be one full role of a person, Agreed. like the internal broker, you know, Agreed. that, that pairs up, you know, all that stuff or yeah. and just knows that. But I mean, at the end of the day, there's such this business is so much knowledge driven and data driven. Right. Like right. you got to, you know, if you know certain things are going on, you can, you, well, the great thing about real estate is you can insider trade and it's not illegal. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. if you have data that is so good, you can make decisions on things that other people might not see. Right. You know? Right. And so that's, what's, you know, that's, that's what, again, back to like your younger guys giving us MLAs on stuff that's very helpful. And, yeah. you know, um, especially in the competitive environment where you need an edge or if you can squeak out some more rent and there's confidence behind that, then, yeah, yeah, you got to have that knowledge today. Well, you know, and that's like, you know, even on the, um, even on the buyer or tenant rep side, like if you're able to walk into somewhere, like I, I was always very good in Brook Hollow to be able to walk in, the guy would be like, well, what about that? I go, oh, well, I sold that building. To this guy. Oh, that guy bought it? Because they all kind of, the neighbors know each other. So I could be like, yeah. yeah, I sold that one. No, I sold that one too. And that one. Yeah. And they're like, well, I heard that traded at that. I go, no, it traded at this because I <laughs> sold it, you know? Yeah. And so that was always, you know, being able to articulate that, you know, it's so, you know, I think it's so important for brokers to not just like, you know, there, there's one thing to going out and making deals and connecting people, but like actually studying your market. Oh, yeah. You know, hundred percent agree. Like that's a, that's a whole nother thing that like, you know, I, Jeff and I've talked about this before. What if you took like just four hours a week and you just like studied the availables yeah. in the markets and yeah. just, um, you know, if you just put that time in and, you know, that's why, you know, a big part of their side of things is driving the markets, right. you know? Um, and, uh, and I think a lot of people rely just on CoStar, which doesn't tell the complete story. Correct. You know? So, um, but, uh, I, I think that's when someone's making an evaluation of who's going to work on their project, it's, you know, how relevant are they to the, to that type of product right. and how much data they, and, and that'll come with the data they have. Right. Because right. they're like, Hey, I know this about all these and I know you can achieve this because we achieved it right down the street on this. Yep. And that could swing an underwrite totally different direction. 100%. You know, I, there's sometimes I look at deals and I'm like, that's an 850 net building. And someone's like, no, that's like 12 net. And I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> you know? Yep. So, um, yeah. Testament to the, to the data y'all can aggregate over that's there. Right. So, that's right. um, what, uh, what, uh, what, tell me what one of your most like unique deals you've kind of ever put together or like, you know, you know, hops tenants here and there, put them, yeah. you know, um, all right, so I'm going to tell you about two. Uh, the first one is at City Warehouse. Okay. So City Warehouse. What is, a project, man. What a project, yeah. It, it, that Talk about something to come. That's going to be something bigger and oh. better at, at someday. But yeah. So adjacent to downtown off of I-30, the old Ford plant that was operational from, um, gosh, probably the late 30s into the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, so any deal you do there is pretty unique just because it's such a unique building. But yeah. We did a deal, uh, Texas Recycling, a um, handful of years back. Jim Hazard was was repping them. But okay. cool deal because it 
required an SUP for recycling use. It's actually a two-story warehouse. So we had to figure out freight elevators and what's the value, what can we get them to pay on the second floor. Yeah. It had rail, outside storage. Uh, and then in, in conjunction with that, uh, the Holt or the the group was just about to refinance it with some, uh, I think some life coat debt that had some pretty narrow underwriting to it. So we had to get real creative in terms of breaking down the value of the different areas of the building okay. to pull it off. So just in terms of uh, an intricate deal, yeah. that was pretty fun uh, and just interesting. So Texas Recycling done it at City Warehouse. How long did that take to get done start to finish? Yeah, gosh, man. I mean, that had some, that's probably an eight month yeah. long deal. I mean, that's that took some time to to unwind. And, How many square feet did they take? Oh, it was probably a 200,000 square foot deal between they upstairs, get, downstairs. They any outside storage out there? Yeah, there's probably another acre and a half yeah. like that. Um, I always, so we, we bought a building in San Antonio and, and it's a 100,000 foot building and it, you know, sawtooth building like, oh, yeah. like, like uh, yeah, like city. Uh, well, when we and Will, Will toured it, he's like, "What do you think about this?" I was like, <laughs> "This is our city warehouse." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's probably in an awesome location, and it's uh, you cash flow it until it's time to be something different. Oh yeah, it's uh, I mean, we're already there. You know, we're already getting letters about them expanding the road and getting some eminent domain and Good. some things like that. And Good. So it's uh, you know, we and you know, we just cleaned it up. You know, right. we went down there and cleaned it up. We took, you know, the rents were like at a buck net. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I literally was negotiating with one of our tenants the other day. I said, listen, you're paying $60, 60 cents a foot net. Yeah. Like, I, this is charity. I can't do this. Right. <laughs> so, right. But, you know, we've gotten everybody up to the high fours. Okay. Mid, oh, all the, right. To like some, we got some at six, you yeah, know, okay. so, um, good, good on you guys. But, uh, it's been a, it's been a, but I was like, this is, this is my city warehouse. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the mini city warehouse. But man, I've always looked at that project and been like, God, this thing is so cool. Like, yeah, it is. It's fun. And, uh, some of those deals are a labor of love just cause they're yeah. not very big. And yeah. So. Yeah, because you got, you know, I mean, I'm, I've thrown dead storage guys in there a couple exactly times right. and exactly stuff right. like that. And, yeah. Um, so now we've got, we've got another, we got Mitch helping us now. So another young guy. Okay. But, uh, the, um, so, so you brought up mezzanine. Oh, yeah. How do you oh, view controversial mezzanine? Mezz. Yeah. Hot, <laughs> controversial, hot topics. Here's, here's, here's my take on mezzanine. All right. Buyers never want to pay for it. Correct. Once they own it, they want to be paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Accurate assessment. Yeah. So, uh, God, it's always an argument. It it's is. always an argument with people. Yeah. So is it one for one? Well, uh, so interestingly enough, I'm out of the, I, I've always been paid on it from a leasing perspective. Okay. Um, and not, not even discounted. I mean, that's coming to the, the, the thought process from a negotiating standpoint, but I think each by and large, every time I've had mez situation, I've been paid on it. Yeah. Now we had a deal off of Avenue R, um, where we essentially kind of walled off some of the mez and just mothballed it to yeah. where they didn't pay on that portion, but they used it and, and paid on it. Yeah. And which is interesting. So we're seeing a lot of these California buyers come in that want to, uh, own in their own building. And, they're talking about wanting mez and building mez, and I was oh, like, oh, wow. "Yeah, that, that doesn't happen in our market." Yeah, you know, proactively build out the mez. Yeah, we. Um, you know, I was selling this building for this client of mine, and they have about four thousand feet of mez in it. Yeah, and I mean, he'd always be like, "But we have this mezzanine." <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's Dude, "Nice." No one cares about the mezzanine, <laughs> right? <laughs> I actually want to tear it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, because legit elevators, then you get in all these other ADA problems. That right. just—it's always just a, a mess. The um, have you been in the Tuesday morning building? No, no, I'm familiar with it because our guys have spent a bunch of time talking about that. But uh, they had the mezzanine storage. Yes, okay. I mean that is a. That well, is they, a, they demoed out a bunch of it, didn't they? Well, I, they may have okay. at this time, but like yeah. I toured it probably a year ago, okay. and I was just like. Dude, I don't know what you do with this. Yeah. Because it's so big. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you bring three pallets up the elevator and you go 250,000 feet that way. <laughs> yeah. You know? And you so, are losing money just moving freight. Yeah. I was like, I, this is, 
I don't know. I don't know how you quantify this on it. Um, so I don't know how people are viewing that on that deal. I don't think it's traded yet. I don't think that building is traded yet. I think some of the other ones are. But uh, well, they may have taken it out. I know N2G Ventures did a ton of work to relaunch yeah. that, and uh, yeah, I think Lee and Associates guys, maybe Rich Young, kind of Lee and Richard, released, yeah, released yeah. that together. Yeah, Stephen Williamson and Adam and Rich are all working on it. Come. So, um, but yeah. But, then that becomes a problem because some of that stuff becomes structural and you start messing with that and then like yeah. in, tied in with the columns and yeah. just a big, big mess and lots of money trying to demo it. Yeah. We had a, um, we, we, now we had it now, I guess it also depends on the, the construction of the mezzanine, right? Like yep. we, we were buying this building in San Antonio and they had like 3000 foot wooden mezzanine. Okay. And I mean, it was like, you could probably like, if it, you can, if a forklift hit it, the thing's coming Over. down, you yeah. know, and um, safety hazard. Yeah. yeah. And we were when we measured the building while we were under contract, the building was 2000 feet smaller than oh. what the footprint was. So we went back to them. They're like, but you're getting 3000 <laughs> of <laughs> wooden hazard mess. <laughs> I was like, it just became these these conversations became so unreasonable. I just looked at Will and I said, hey, look, I support you on this yeah. if you want to do this. But. I don't think you want to do this. Like, there's a bunch of other things, but yeah. I was like, this was just another, yeah. just another. The Mez took it over the top. Yeah. And um, so it's uh, it's funny. I had to, um, uh, when we, um, this uh, back to this client of mine that was selling their building, and he's just always bringing up this mess. We ended up not selling their biz building, and I sold them a building on Bronze Way okay. earlier this year. Okay. And it had Mez in it. Oh. And I was like, and he's like, oh, this is too high. I go, he goes, you know, we're a hundred bucks a foot, right? Or whatever. Yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, it's a hundred bucks a foot. That's just too expensive. I go, well, hold on. It has like 6,000 feet of mess. <laughs> Let me add that. Free and we'll lower it down. Yeah. So I look, and he's like, like, I can just tell. <laughs> he was like, you, you, uh, uh, like he didn't have an argument. So yeah. back, I was like, buyers yeah. don't want to pay for it. Yeah. Sellers or landlords want to charge for it. Yeah. So. Depends on which side you're on. It does. Co controversy of Mez. The uh, the ultimate Mez I saw that I really didn't know how to figure out was the Mary Kay building. Oh, yeah. That thing was a, yeah. I mean, it was legitimately built that way. It's right. three stories of Mez. Right. You know, and, and uh, I'd sold the annex building. Yeah, and I, I had, remember that. I had to, the, to Lone Star Electric? Well, or? I sold it to an investor. Okay. And then um, I leased it to Lone Star the day we closed. Okay. And, uh, well done. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, that and was a good comp. I remember pointing at that comp and like, oh, look at this. Blue yeah, color it was comp. like and I think it was like six seventy five. Yeah, yeah. That then. was and that was like absolutely. That was like a watermark. We pointed point. <laughs> and those MLA underwriting. We yeah. pointed out a lot. Yeah. Well, um, so we leased it to him. That that's kind of like my pinnacle deal. Me and Turner did that deal, and it was like we this investor called us on the side of the road and was like, hey, I want to buy buildings yeah. down here, and I want big buildings. I was like, well, there's like. 10 of them, yeah. <laughs> like above a hundred thousand feet. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, we got a hold of that one cause I knew the seller, I knew the owner of it cause he was in the metal fab world and that was okay. where I'd come from. And That's so I right. knew him from there. And, um, and then we get in a contract and that investor's just like, you better get a tenant or I'm not closing. <laughs> and I was like, Oh God. Okay. So, Turner Turner got a hold of Lone Star Electric and, and, uh, and I was like, get us a meeting, we get in there for like, we're going to get this done. So we, we signed a lease with them. But what happened was when COVID hit, the investor got oh. scared and we put about 10 bucks a foot into the building. Okay. Um, it had some HVAC or it had some infrastructure or something, didn't well, it? Well, it had a big built-in mezzanine. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, built-in racking system. Okay. Inline sprinklers and everything. So we had oh. to go demo out all the sprinklers. Rate, oh, yeah. Uh, Price. Rate, yeah, yeah. It, was, it wasn't cheap to do all that. And it had no office in it. So we had to okay. go build all their showroom in it. So we were 10 bucks a foot. And so about $1.3 million TI. And um, the um, – um, so we get down – COVID hits. The investor gets nervous thinking they're not going to make it yeah. for some reason. They were a solid company. I was like, yeah, okay. And um, and he, he calls them up and he goes, hey, your, um, uh, your rent – is the same as a mortgage if you pay me like 110 a foot. Yeah. You know, and, you know, he bought it for 65 a foot. Okay. Put 10 bucks a foot into it, made that much money. And that's when I said, I'm going to do this for myself. Absolutely. Going forward. Yes. Yeah. Like, we put all that together. He just had money. I got to go yeah. figure out money. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But we had that uh, Mary Kay deal um, together. 
um, on the other side doing a sale leaseback yep. with those guys. They're the Humanetics, the, okay, the right. owner of it now, and they were going to move yeah. in. And man, it was just that thing was a beast of a yep. building, man. Yep. I mean, which that was Bill Daly Chappelle's client. Yeah, okay. yeah. Bill Daly Chappelle rep. rep uh, Humanetics okay. and uh, they bought the Mary Kay site whenever Steve Berger took it out. Yeah. Um, and uh, they bought it on a lease back from Mary Kay with the intent to move in it. But I knew they never needed the uh, annex building because it okay. was so much bigger than what they needed. And, and uh, the president of Humanetics, like he, he was a really cool guy. He would like kind of mint, he would like anytime I had a question on anything in that, that world, we were competitors, but like, man, he would, he would give me full, Access. Oh, that's cool. And so, um, uh, really great guy. And, um, it, it, so, but they, uh, but they bought it for all the power and all their fabrication yeah, stuff. Absolutely. And, and all that. I'm sure they, I think they put their powder coating line on the second floor and all that stuff. And so they figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. They made it work. And I mean, their basis in the deal, I mean, that's almost like a covered land play at some point. I mean, it's a city absolutely. block, you know? Yeah. Um, it is covered land play. Yeah. Exactly right. So, um, but uh, yeah, we were we were going to charge on that mez. Yeah, but that was kind of that building. That was what that was. Right. So, um, the forever ongoing mez debate. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. To be continued, not yeah. to be solved here. Too yeah. controversial. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> Swings underwriting. Very. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, well, cool. What um, what do you say? Like, kind of like you know, your routines, habits. Like, you know, what's your like, you know. You seem like you said this earlier. You were the process guy, so you seem very yeah. like regiment. You're the military guy, process driven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a uh, uh, I'm pretty disciplined in, mm -hmm. by and large. So workout guy. I like to start my morning with some weights or yep. running or CrossFit, some kind of workout. Okay, I feel like it just helps me think. Yeah. Um, then a little bit of a little bit of quiet time or some journaling, try to get my day straight. Yeah. And then, uh, for the most part, I, I eat pretty well outside of, it's not something work related to lunch, client, lunch, client dinner, or something fun on the weekend. Then yeah. I'm pretty boring in terms of what I eat, yeah. which the team will laugh at me and just think I'm a weirdo. You got it all macroed out and everything. Uh, I've, I've, yeah. Pretty dialed I've, I've kind of got my perfect day and I know if I eat, you know, ninety percent towards that, then I've done you pretty good to, it right. to keep it in the lines. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 creature habit and pretty disciplined. Yeah, for the most part. What time do you get to the office every day? Uh, well, my workout. So I get up at five. Okay, but I'm I'm not I'm I'm later at the office than I am early. So I'm probably there eight forty five. Yeah. But you've already Sometimes been nine. But you're already doing a bunch of stuff the whole time. Yeah, it's and, not that I'm not up. I'm just doing yeah. doing some other stuff. Yeah, or, no. or trying to get calls. Although, like, I almost find if I get a little time at home, mm -hmm. start my day there, I can get some efficiencies. Just work on yeah. some of my stuff rather than getting pulled into so many different conversations. Or if you need to bang out a bunch of calls, yeah. I mean, you're better off to kind of get secluded and and spend some time by yourself. Yeah. No, we uh. I mean, I, sometimes I don't leave my house till 10. Yeah. Because I'm like, I, I got things Tackle I got to knock your stuff out, first. You know? And yeah. um, because... I, I call it the deal cave. They know if I'm in the deal cave, yeah. I got to get some seclusion and, yeah. and yeah. work on my own stuff. Because otherwise, you, you know... But it, I don't. I don't care what off. This isn't. This isn't. Uh, you know, exclusive to our office. It's any office. But if you shut your door, someone will be like, "Yeah, exactly." Hey, you got a minute? <laughs> yeah. Or or if you got your 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 buds in. Are you, on, are you on the phone? Yeah. You on the phone? <laughs> yes, but come on in. What? I mean, yeah. try to tackle both at the same time. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I wouldn't have in any other way. No. I love it. it at the same time, yeah. like as, uh, as kind of, I guess, disciplined I am, I also thrive on the, the chaos of it. Yeah. Which is also ironic of why I love the, the business, just because extreme highs and lows and, yeah. um, you know, you just got to be in the game long enough to capture the highs. Yeah. Right. So I yeah. love, I'm addicted to the chaos of it despite, um, also getting exhausted from it. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it's, you know, the, there, there are some very massive highs and lows in this yeah. industry, man. It, yeah. uh, you could be working on something like your city warehouse deal, eight months and right. it could, you know, 
not make. Right. You know, that happens. Right. We've all, we've all had one of those. Yep. And, um, it's funny. I was, I was, me and Will have our little, little podcast every week. And we were talking about this yesterday, but, um, there's a, there's that guy in New York, uh, Ryan Sarhant that does, uh, the owning man, you know, he's like a residential guy. Okay. But, uh, I, I watched his little show and it's, you know, he, you know, he's pretty, pretty big time broker, man. Yep. And, um, they yeah, was, some good commish from <laughs> condos in New York. Oh, he had a two hundred fifty million dollar listing. Oh, jeez, <laughs> a penthouse like yeah. on. Uh, Are they getting a full six there? Three right. and three. <laughs> I, I would think that stuff would be negotiated <laughs> yeah, there. Right. Um, but uh, you know, he 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 wrapped up his his this season of his show, and I thought he said something really cool. He said, "You know, real estate has the highest highs and the lowest lows." Yeah. He goes, "But what gets me up every morning." is knowing that the greatest deal I've ever done, I still haven't done it yet. Yeah. And I was like, that's pretty cool. That makes yeah. you like, okay, yeah, I, you know, there's another big deal out there to be had. And those, right. those highs are so cool. And, yeah. And uh, just got to stay in the game. You do, man. You gotta, and, and every good deal dies at least once, right? Oh, before before you make it. It does. It's uh, it's funny, too. On the, on the buyer rep side, sometimes people got to lose a deal to make their next one. Yeah. You know. Exactly right. I've seen that. I've seen that happen. I've seen guys just, you know, just negotiate too many times. I've always told them, you know, they're always like, well, I want to go back with this. What do you think? I go, well, I think you better be willing to lose it. Right. In order to win it. And they're like, okay, I think I'm willing to lose. And then sometimes when they lose, they're like, really? I'm like, (laughs) yeah. I told you. (laughs) Well, that's frustrating for your side too. Yeah. And especially coming out of this landlord market that we were in. And Oh, yeah. uh, So some of that's changing here. Some, you yeah. know, I mean that you're we're, as a landlord guy, you're having to get back to the basics. But uh, yeah, we went through a stretch where <laughs> no was the answer, and and yeah, tenor guys kind of became accustomed to that, and and did a good job communicating to their clients that uh, no, no is no, we better yeah. take this or they'll give it to the next guy. Yeah, it, that was man. So that was tough. That's been tough. Like. As a you know, when I started as a tenant rep, it was like six months free. Yeah, yeah, good. The, the, the parlay to the stuff that I brought here, but oh, no, exactly yeah. right. It's um, so like you know, it, it uh, now it's been tougher. Like on a deal, it's like, how do I provide value? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I can get you a month free. Or... Maybe you know, here's the rate. You right. know, <laughs> right? It's so it's 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 been a challenge. But, yeah, so. Well, I brought some of these uh, old proposals. I thought this would oh, be fun. Yeah. So here we go. This is uh, March 12th, uh, 2010 to Donnie Rohde, <laughs> 935 Avenue R, 35,000 square feet, uh, months 1 through 12, 99 cents. Wow. And the funniest thing is like- I remember this building. Yeah. It was Avenue like a duplex R. building, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, But yeah, yeah. it could be a single tenant building too. And so the best thing is, uh, let me see if I can find that. Woodward, Woodward Skate, Skate Park. Who the hell is that? What are they doing these days? I don't know, but they didn't take the deal. <laughs> they didn't take the deal. Not good enough. No. Look, and the um, the rent is three thirty five triple net. Yeah, and that's probably what the nets are today on this building. No, exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. All right, now we got one to Buddy Turner uh, at nine fifty seven Hines Way, which uh, that's at in least Arlington. That, yeah. That, that's At least a, that for years. How lower, big is that lower building? GW, so that's 160,000 square feet. Okay. So this was a Central Garden and Pet, and we were working them for a renewal. Okay. And uh, Brewer over in Heller Industrial Park had something else they were interested in. So we proactively went to them, and we're going to change their existing uh, rent structure with a year free, uh, and then start at 225 triple net uh, for an effective rate. Over the full term on a five year deal for two eleven, net. They and, didn't take it, and they didn't take the deal. Yeah. <laughs> Let no, no. Let's move. Yeah, right. A year <laughs> free for current rent. Uh, and yeah, just f- funny. One more Noel Hutchison uh, with Collier's same building, mm-hmm. uh, amalgamated sugar. So we get we were giving them a year free, and then a year at dollar uh, seventy five net. For an overall effective rate of a dollar ninety nine, and did they take it? They didn't take the deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's the craziest thing to me. I, oh yeah, my god! I, I knew we chuckled at those. That but, is uh, solid gold goodness, right there. Man. That is goodness. Uh, 
So, yeah, it's, um, well, you deserved your day over the past couple of years to say. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Because, yeah, yeah, give, give us give us our, our day, man. We, we yeah. did deserve that. Yeah, we maybe start it. maybe starting to neutralize a little bit. We're getting, <laughs> getting a little, we're getting back on offense, get a little edge over yeah. there. So, but, yeah. Um, no, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's. It was tough. It was tough to look at like, well, let me ask you this though, too. So this is, this is one thing that I've kind of seen. And I kind of thought about this on, you know, we did a renewal in uh, Inwood Trade Center Yep. and um, yep. 17,000 feet. Mm-hmm. And they were paying 550 net mm-hmm. and we went to like 1050 net. Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, that's like an $85,000 annual increase, right? I know. And that's like for a small business, they just wiped out the owner's salary yeah right yeah. um are you seeing like small businesses just not take it and just move or just fold or is it i mean because the, the 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 flip side to it is is that is y'all are seeing the demand you know you're kind of like the market maker right you're you're seeing the demand on the other side and you're seeing what this is at it's like hey look if you don't want to take this bid ask like i'm just gonna lease it to this guy yeah you know yeah so how how you know tenants absorb that and how have you seen that kind of play out? Yeah, it's been a problem here. Um, it's just been interesting to observe. I'm fortunate that I've got a wide uh, sample set of different things to see. So yeah. the bigger stuff has still been active, like 500 to a million. That was cooking. There was stuff happening. Yeah. But then the smaller, we'll call them mom and pop plus, because they're a little bigger than just straight up mom and plus. Sure. Pop, but in the smaller regional, those are the guys that got hit the hardest because year over year, 40%. And, you know, I might have had 150% rent increase or maybe mm-hmm. 200% was our, our all-time high. But you could average that out at a 50% all day long, yeah. if not doubling them. Um, and that was just kind of – Brook Hollow and GSW are the best sample sets for those where we would just ratchet up and like, okay, well, let's – why don't we see what we get on the next one? Yeah. And then that went ice cold. They just stopped taking the rent increase. So mm-hmm. to your point, I think it just got to a point where it crippled those businesses and they legit found other options, whether yeah. it's um, move in with a friend or, or, yeah. or a, a, a friendly business or consolidate. We saw a lot of consolidations. Um, so started getting space back. And I think Brook Hollow specifically got hit hard on yeah. that because that's a big chunk of that business. And all of a sudden you did a search for 20,000 square feet where there might've been four options. And now there's legit like 25 options. Yeah. Um, so I think we've been living through that maybe the end of uh, maybe mid last year till now we've kind of been working through that. Mm. It feels like we're on the front end of, of some of that strengthening, but yeah, yeah there was an absolutely a period to where, the smaller tenant was just done taking the rent bump and finding other alternatives. The, um, you know, it's funny you say that because that there was a time where a comp didn't really matter because the next deal was just going to be higher. Yeah. And you'd look at it and be like, Oh, I, I can make a deal there. And it's yeah. like, you get the proposal and you're like, you know, you get a comp on a building. You're like, Oh, Hey, Mr. Tenant, hey, right. look, they, they made a deal down the street at this price. <laughs> yeah. And then it just backfires on you when you get the proposal and you're 25, 50 cents a foot higher. You're like, but they just made that deal. I was like, I yeah. know, but they took that deal off the table. That bo- that that deal's off the board, right? right. So there, there was a time where the market was moving so quickly yeah. that comps were irrelevant because it's just the comp was setting the next tier of the market. <laughs> right. hundred percent. And I had several of those conversations. Yeah. I don't remember what deal it was, but, uh, Brooke Hollow, Alex Co. with Cressa was working the other end. And mm-hmm. yeah, he came to me with a handful of my own comps or our, my, mine and Maddie's comps and, yeah. and said just that. And I was like, all right. I mean, good point. <laughs> yeah. But here's the new number. Yeah. <laughs> and they took it. So, You're but right. uh, no, that's, 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 that's what it is. And, um, you know, you're talking about, I, I kind of feel like Brook Hollow's got into this almost quasi design district. Yeah. Cause you know, design district, a lot of people went down there, bought a bunch of buildings, right. put a bunch of money into it, thought they were going to get 17, 18 net on all those things. And man, yeah. I remember, I think it was 2021 or it's 2019. I was looking at vacancy in design district. Okay. It was like 19%. Which is shocking because it was never like that. 
I mean, there was just, you, you couldn't lease buildings down there. Yeah. And um, I remember when I got in the business in 2010, coming out of 2009, Redbird was 16% vacant. Yeah. And I mean, I was like, this is 2019 and 17%, 18% vacant. So, right. so I think there could be some of that where, you know, Brook Hollow was always the cheap alternative. Agreed. Now it's becoming... Quasi. I mean, there's people they want nine dollars a foot for their twenty five foot thousand building, and I mean, yeah. you might be able to go to the airport and get a brand new building. Yeah, pretty close to Which that we, rate. We've we're still pushing some of those rates, and we'll get yeah. those rates. Yeah. But to your point, so uh, Inwood Design Center for mm-hmm. Heinz, we leased that, which is just on the fringe of the design district, and that was part of the thesis is to kind of be the lower cost alternative to some of those tenants. Yeah. Which hadn't a hundred percent panned out for that profile of tenant, it, it's still not quite that, but yeah. you got a handful of guys that are spillover from the design <clears throat> district, but, uh, but you're right. I mean, um, yeah, we just issued a proposal the other day for 20,000 square feet at almost 10 bucks. And yeah, some of those, <laughs> some of those numbers. Yeah. It's, um, the, uh, got, I love that project. Like there oh, was, awesome. a, there was a time where I think I had about 50% of the tenants in that project. Uh, yeah. You guys, you guys <laughs> still have a big chunk of them. <laughs> and, um, I remember when that, that was coming out that that was going to sell. I, I took it to Cantex. And I was like, we have to buy this. Yeah. And, um, yeah. we, we tried, but it didn't happen. What are they doing with, did the, the land behind it sell? Yeah. The uh, land, that's like the Highland Park landfill. Isn't yeah, it? exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So Crow's got a development coming out of the ground there. Oh, okay. What are they building there? You know? Oh, yeah. I don't remember the total square footage, but you can chop them up to like uh, 20s and, and 50s. Got it. So, which would be awesome. Right next door to us, some brand new product. And, yeah. And uh, Stream's leasing that for them. Do they have to access it through your property? Well, they do. Yeah. They do. I guess they had to pay for that. Um, or was there, a, there I, I guess there was I, an easement on the property yeah, probably that, prior to. I think that's already worked out. That was already yeah, worked out. Got it. Um, well, cool. Uh, here's another question I always like to ask. Is there, is there a book you've read that was like, hey, man, this is, you know, or like something like that that like kind of really helped yeah. change some trajectory for you in life? Or? Yeah, I got, I got a couple of books. So uh, Obstacle is the uh, – our obstacle is the way by Ryan Holiday. That guy. Oh, there it is. Look yeah. at that. Well, that's the, the Daily, Daily Stoic. Stoic. So yeah. But uh, but that's man. I, I'm more of a I'm a audio. Yeah. I'm a listen while I'm I'm working out. But I've listened to that several times. And yeah. um, and he also has um a podcast about being a dad or fatherhood, which is pretty good. Some of it gets long winded now, but some yeah. of his earlier stuff was pretty good. But uh, yeah. But great book. Just adversity, kind of sticking to it. Yeah. Um, and just nuances of, of different stories that, that didn't, or that worked out in a way you didn't expect them to relative to the the circumstances. So yeah. that's a great book. Um, another fun, uh, fun one is, um, you are a badass yeah. by Jen Sincero, which that's just kind of a fun one, but still self improvement mm-hmm. and, and just a good mindset book. I've, I've given that one as a gift several times. Yeah. And she's got a calendar that goes along with that and kind of a different saying each day. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So I was listening to the two bears, one cave podcast the other day. I don't know if you I've ever not. listened to that. It's Tom Segura and, and Bert Kreshner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they're comedians. So, oh, hilarious. So I know Bert. And they have this guy on, his name's Will something. I came over, he played in the NFL and he has a barstool podcast to have him on. And so okay. they start talking about stoicism. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're and they're and he's talking about he goes, he starts talking about the power of saying no. <laughs> and so they they start talking about Ryan Holiday. And um and um and Bert's like, Yeah, I just I just don't believe in all this stoic stuff. It's just stupid and what <laughs> going off and power saying no whatever and um they're like well, let's get him on the phone so they get ryan holiday on the oh, phone. oh all right and then he you know he starts because he's like someone explains stoicism and they start saying he goes the power of saying no he goes we called you and got you on the phone immediately you didn't say no <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, they went through this whole exchange and birds just like slamming it that's it pretty funny, good but yeah they had them all there the day but yeah that's been a cool book i haven't yeah. read the obstacles away but i've seen a lot i've seen it and i've heard a lot of people tell me oh, about it and, yeah uh, you gotta add that add so, that to your list well what's something unique about canon schultz that most people don't know 
Yeah. Uh, I've, I've run, I'm a meathead at heart. So okay. kind of my progression, I'm a, I'm a good old nineties era, Ronnie Coleman yep. meathead at heart. Yeah. Uh, turned runner well, you're from Arlington. Turned, Come on. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Uh, turned runner, turn crossfitter. So yeah. I've run 22 half marathons. Okay. Uh, that's, that's pretty that's solid. That's where, 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 uh, any unique places or just all no, in Dallas? No good, no good location. Per oh, se, you got to go back to the mountains, man. I know. Come exactly. On. Yeah. Get some, get some cooler climate. Yeah. 22 halves. When's the last one you did one? Uh, year before last. So I'll, I'll kind of, Get into it and then get out of it a little yeah. bit. But uh, and then in terms of getting serious, I, I sometimes I get to coach and and train up, yeah. and then sometimes I'll just go go for fun. But what's your best mile time? Uh, relative to a half or just both? All right. So my half, I've I've got a. Uh, a it was always I was trying to get one thirty or better, hour thirty or okay. better. So I've got a I've got a one twenty nine thirty four. Like a one thirty oh five, a handful of one thirty threes, which so that equates to about a six forty eight pace. That's a that's moving, man. That's pretty good because I'm I'm you know two hundred pound or yeah. you know one ninety five. Yeah. Know. Um, and then my fastest mile, oh, maybe I got to like a five thirty five or something like that. Yeah, that's moving too. So so that's cool, man. Yeah, you gonna run any more? Yeah. Yeah, now I'm trying to just lift, but I'm sure that that's that's in me. So I'm I'm sure I'll you'll get the edge. I'm sure I'll get another one here at some point. I think I'm maybe done. when I turn fifty, because that was the deal. When I turned forty, I wanted to hit within a certain rank in my age group mm-hmm. and and hit a time. So yeah, maybe when I turn fifty, I'll try to do good in my age group again. Yeah, I um I think I've done two. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was it was good. I don't. I just mean the pounding on the concrete just no, that's what I'm gets with me. That's I'm with uh, you. just crush. I love running. Like I love it. And um yeah. but man, just the so I'll try to run on a trail every now and then. Yeah. I wish I ran more, but I'm just I don't. I got really into jujitsu this year. So okay. I've been doing man, that a lot. I'm, I, that's everywhere in the universe. Yeah. I, that, that's calling my name. It's you to try it, it out. Yeah. I think I would. It's fun, man. It's uh I'm just freaked out about getting hurt or you know there's, you know, it's the average guy at our gym is 40. Okay. So they're all concerned about getting hurt. Okay. You know? Um, yeah. But then you probably got that one guy that shouldn't be really badass trying to do something stupid. You got to be careful when you go with the kids. Okay. Because you will, get, like, I I went with a kid, uh, <laughs> you, you know, just graduated high school. He's a middle linebacker, like oh, McKinney, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you played college football, old man. I'm uh, gonna, pff, I yeah. give him that you old man strength. Tech. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, but he's, you know, well, it, the, the big issue is in the beginning is everybody that starts is a spaz, right? Okay. They're like, cause you know, I mean like you start, it's getting, all control. You start getting choked. You're like, Bleh! yeah, you know, but yeah. like, cause you don't know what, you don't know what to do to get out of it. So that's where a lot of that comes from. But, uh, um, but you know, you, you, you know, it, it it, it can be if you're rolling with the right people and everybody's kind of knows what the pace is and yeah. you know it. I don't know. I think you can avoid injury for the most part. Yeah. So because um, if it's that if it's that age group, they're all there kind of for the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of start feeling when you can go hard and when you you know you know it's like I, I was rolling with the guy yesterday. He's probably thirty and this guy's okay. a beast. Yeah. And like just. And I, I like to roll with him because he kills me constantly. Because I'm like, God, I gotta, you know, I just I gotta yeah. figure out how to beat this guy. Yeah. And um, but like today I roll with a guy who's probably my age, and I was like, I could tell, like, you know, we were supposed to be going to submission. And every time I'd sweep him or something, it'd be like, he'd like stop. Like, okay, okay, cool. I'm like, I was gonna finish you off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you want to stop? Okay, we'll stop. Yeah. You know, so you can yeah. kind of you can kind of read the body language of you know if someone wants more or not. You know, yeah. So. So where um, are you going for that? Uh, there's a place in Prosper right by our house. So, okay, um, it, it's popular. It's everywhere now. So. It's 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 fun, man. Uh, we'll, I'll go on Sundays like open mat and just go get after it for like two hours. You okay. know, so it's, it's a hell a, of a workout, right? Oh, yeah, it's a total. I think it took me 30 sessions to get my body acclimated to oh, it. Wow, okay. You know what I mean? Because like it's you, just a different kind of condition. Well, yeah, because it's. I mean, it's a lot of your body just getting smashed. Yeah. Like you know, so you got to like kind of get used to being sore. And all those things and uh, yeah. and kind of get past that but uh 
But like now it's like, I can just go every day. Cause my body's like, and in the beginning it's crazy. Like I'd, I'd, I'd go at night okay. and like, I couldn't sleep. And when I would go to bed, I'd have like 50 <laughs> dreams. Cause my, I think my body thought I'd, oh, know, yeah. it was in fight, or, fight flight. or flight. It was yeah, in fight absolutely. or flight. And so I was like, I can't. I was like, I can't sleep. So I go in yeah. the mornings now because I got to, you know, but now, now when I go in the evenings though, if I do go in the evenings, it's like, it's no big deal. Like, it's like, I can go to sleep now. My body's like, okay, we get it. You're, yeah. you're playing with us, you know? So. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm intrigued about is just like, uh, putting yourself in that situation and the, the pressure of that or the flight or f- the fight or flight and yeah. just working through that with your body. I mean, it, it's just interesting. It, well, it's like, um, it's, a uh, it's a lot like, um. Uh, pl- solving complex problems yep. under pressure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Right. You know, it's, Keep your uh, composure. And yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? You're being choked. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, if you drain your energy too much, cause you're trying to just fight your way out of it, like the guy's just going to wait you out and you're going to gas out and he's going to get you, you know? So yeah. it's, uh, it's been, you know, it's interesting. Like today I was working on something today where it's like, I'm going to do this to you to get you to do this so that I can do this to you, yeah. you know? And so there's a lot, it, uh, honestly, it's, kind of like negotiating real estate sometimes it's like okay we'll give them this yeah and see if they come back with this so that we can do this you know so that's that's i I enjoy the complexity of that of it it's like you know and it's like did you ever see that tom cruise movie i think it's like day after tomorrow where he just keeps dying and like he's like this soldier and like that's how i feel like it's like you're like you're like running (laughs) boom you're dead all right wake up do it again Boom. Yeah. You know, sometimes you live, some t- most times you die. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, it's been, it's been fun. I really enjoy yeah, it. I gotta so. check that out. So, well, cool, man. This was awesome. I, yeah. I appreciate think, it. uh, very you know, cool. A lot I've, of, I've enjoyed listening to some of the other podcasts and, yeah. and some of the other guys on. It's fun, man. I, it's, uh, it's kind of just becoming this documentation of Dallas commercial real yeah. estate. So it, it's fun. And well, it's, it's, uh, it's such a unique business when, and so many, Great personalities, great people. Yeah. So it's fun to hear different stories and, and you feel like you connect with them in, in a different way to, to listen to them. Yeah. Well, I'm glad everybody got to hear this because, like I said, I kind of I kind of look at you as like probably more, probably the top leasing broker in in, uh, in Dallas for Thank industrial. Man. It's that. like when I, appreciate you know, I, I, I'm just always, you know. Working a deal with you has always been great too, man. I, I'll tell you one thing uh, I always think that's really great about you is is you're always calm and collected. Like you're very Appreciate cool, that. you know, like deals can get pretty heated sometimes, but I feel like you never lose your cool. And I think yeah. that's very important. Yeah. Um, so I've always well, appreciated that working with you. So. It's, it's, a, it is, it's a small world. Yep. So, <laughs> you know, don't be an asshole <laughs> yeah. because whether it's that young asset manager that uh, is early on, or a young broker, everybody grows up and yep. and everybody's going to be meaningful. So yeah, that's just, true. It's very you know, true. And at the end of the day, we all have a common common goal, and yeah. it it should legit be fun. Like yeah. how it it's it's a puzzle that yep. you're figuring out together, and at the end of the day, you get paid. So that's right. That's have, right. Have fun doing it. Well, awesome, Ken Schultz, everybody. Yeah, appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Yep. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>